Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be doing yet another Russian Q&A. On my Twitter page, I asked you guys to ask me interesting questions you had about Russia or questions about me, and I'm gonna be answering the best ones in this video. However, before we begin this, I would like to say that this video is sponsored by... Me! Yes, exactly, because what is going on right now is that I'm releasing my own U2's figure. <laughs> YouTubes are basically these figurines that you can buy as a little souvenir and also support the creator you love. It's kind of like a type of merch, I guess. I have these Swag Souls and Fits right here. I don't have mine because uh, the Russian customs are held in it on the border because uh, it's too swag. But yeah, my very own YouTubes is actually dropping on May 22nd. It's gonna be free shipping worldwide. It's pretty nice. All of them usually come in a limited release and also I've worked a lot to actually get the design for this one right and there's so much different concepts I went through so it would be awesome if you guys got these but the thing is that I understand not everybody can afford to do it right now or not everybody is gonna be able to get it so I'm actually doing a giveaway together with you two and I'm gonna give out a few of these figurines for free to some lucky winners basically all you need to do to participate in the giveaway is go down in the description check out all the directions and there you know you need to follow my accounts follow you retweet my tweets and also there's other options that the more you do basically the higher chance of winning is and the winners will be picked before the day of the drop on May 22nd so yeah now you know your boy is getting the U2s. twos 22nd it's solid brother let's get into the video what's the russian food that you enjoy that you think most people would find repulsive <laughs> that is a great question i think definitely holodets which is basically like uh jello meat there's this buzzfeed video where americans try russian dishes and they tried holodets and they absolutely hate it <laughs> <laughs> Mm -mm. Like the taste is fine. It just yeah. it tastes like you know chicken pot pie, whatever. It's the texture. Oh my god, this is so gross. Yeah, they really hate it. And here's the thing: the holodets that they were eating kind of look like trash, anyways. But yeah, what holodets basically? It's kind of like cold meat jelly. I don't know how to describe it, but you cut it like you with a cake, I guess, and you eat it with mustard. It's really good, but it seems like most Westerners hate it. Now here's the thing: there are actually some foods that a lot of Russians enjoy that I actually find repulsive. Actually, there's this one Russian dish that everybody, all, all of my relatives love it, but I, absolute, I absolutely despise it. I just cannot bring myself to eat it, and that is akroshka. It's a kind of soup, but the idea is that basically, it is basically stalichny or olivia salads. If you guys don't know what that is, it's like kalbasa plus eggs plus potatoes plus some greens plus green onion, carrots, peas, and stuff like that. And all of that is usually is, is an olivia salad. Usually just uh, mix it with mayonnaise and there it is. That's a salad, right? But akroshka is a scuffed soup version of that. Basically what it is, is just the same salads, but what you do instead of just eating it dry is actually you add kvass to it. And kvass is a traditional Russian drink which kind of tastes like cola and beer at the same time, I don't know how to describe it. And then also you add sour cream or mayonnaise on top of that and uh, you eat it like a soup. And it's just the most disgusting thing ever in my opinion, like mixing this kind of sweet drink kvass and using it as broth and mixing that all with carrots, potatoes and eggs and just, it's awful. And my entire family has been trying to teach me to like it for years, and I just don't. I just hate it so much. It's unbelievably bad. Don't try it. That's just my opinion, though. You know, all Akroshka lovers in the comments unite and please hate on me. I will not change my opinion. Does Russia have the same stigma around private schools that America has? The stigma being that only rich kids go to private school. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I don't know, guys. I don't know a single person who's went to private school. You know, this is my Russian pool level. Do private schools even exist in my my city of Chilevins, to be honest, I'm not sure. My, I think my city is just so broke that there's not a single private school out here. But yeah, it's not really just an American thing. It's like the same all over the world. So if you go to a private school, you're probably very rich. You know, it's like these kind of kids. Like, remember from my uh, one of my videos? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the kids that have uh, 3 million ruble outfits and Aldemar Piget watches at the age of 15. Yeah, those are the type of kids that study in private schools. So the stereotype is completely justified, I guess. I remember you talked about the currency going to shit. Any updates on that? Yeah, you see, it's really been going all over the place recently. However, it's not as terrible as I expected it to be. However, it's still pretty bad. At least I would definitely say that I stopped panicking because when it actually dropped first, I was like going crazy and th I, th I thought that all of my savings are basically burning before my before my eyes. So currently, one single US dollar is actually 73 
Russian rubles. And before the coronavirus, the entire economy drop, uh, it was actually about 66, 67, something like that. When I was freaking out though, it was 80. So it was pretty bad. And I've actually exchanged a certain amount of my savings into dollars when it was 80. And so I actually ended up losing money. So congratulations to me i'm a complete idiot but yeah you know it's still pretty bad but it's honestly not as terrible and i'm not i'm definitely not panicking about it you know now let's get into the more serious and interesting question i think so far in this q a and there's actually a whole bunch of questions that are related to this so i decided to kind of combine them all together and create a little discussion let's start with this one why do russians have such a savior complex regarding to post-soviet countries every time statues of red army are taken down or there are anniversaries of soviet crimes or gaining independence from the ussr there can be heard backlash from Russia. So yeah, there's quite a few questions about this, and I guess I wanted to discuss this huge question of why do Russians hate and why do Russians have so much negative feelings towards post-Soviet countries or post-Soviet satellite countries, etc. Why do Russians feel like we own everybody, etc. I think it really comes down to propaganda once again, because I've mentioned multiple times that a lot of Russians have very strong negative feelings against like Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, all of these countries, Ukraine, Ukraine, of course, Belarus, not that much, but yeah, basically everybody, like Czechia, Slovakia, Croatia, you literally could mention any Slavic country, any country that was uh, sort of either a Soviet satellite country or a post-Soviet country, and a Russian always has to say how everybody right now is a traitor to Russia, they all sold out to the West, they sold out, they don't support Russia, and basically we just own all of these countries, and one day we're gonna show them what, who is the real king. And once again, I really think it comes down to propaganda, because on Russia, Russian television every single time like a red army monument is taken down somewhere in some a European country or whatever there's always a huge discussion about it there's always like 25 different TV debates about it and everybody's saying how you know they're terrible and we liberated all these countries from the fascists and it even goes as far as the Russian news Russian TV would always run segments about how like countries like Poland for example have never had a movement of their own and they actually didn't fight against the Nazis and they were not efficient or whatever and it's only Russia that saved them and they wouldn't be anywhere without Russia which is not true and also the Russians mindset is usually like why do all these countries hate us right they call us occupants they said that we didn't bring them anything good we liberated them from the Nazis we're the good guys we saved them and continuing that question once again you always mention your family hating on the Polish is that a norm there and is there any stereotypes for other former satellite nations every time there's like a drunk Russian politics discussion somebody brings up Poland everybody's like yeah they're prostitutes of the West they sell out to the west that they could be slavic brotherhoods but they're sellouts and that they should be they should be friends with russia and it's like no they don't owe us anything the entire smearing of poland and other previous satellites or post-soviet countries on russian television need to stop it's so bad now the only country i think that russia had beef with and that russians actually have no hard feelings against is finland i've actually got this question a few times on this q a and uh, a bunch of people asked me what are uh, you know russian citizens opinions in finland and i would say russian people are pretty indifferent to Finland. They think it's a cool, nice country, I guess. I've never heard a single one of my relatives or uh, any Russian Vatnik boomers ever say anything negative about Finland. Finland is actually Russia's neighbor, and a lot of Russians that live on the border with Finland like to travel to Finland, spend their time there, so I think Russians' attitude towards Finland is pretty chill. I don't know why, because we did have beef, but it is what it is. And again, this question ties in as well. What is the common opinion of the Holodomor? Is it even being discussed, or is it outright denied? If you guys don't know what Galadamor is. It's basically the name for the policy of the Soviet Union in the 1930s where uh, the Soviet government was basically starving the Ukrainian people. Basically, the Soviets literally took all foods and all resources from Ukrainians and people were forced to basically starve. Like, millions of people have died in there. It's, it's basically like the Russian version of the Holocaust, basically. But instead of, like, Germans doing it to the Jewish people, it's Russians doing it to Ukrainians. And so, yeah, is it even being discussed or I'll try tonight? Uh, it's been denied. <laughs> Especially, I remember, during the 2014, the entire Ukrainian, uh, you know, crisis. I remember Russian first channel, the main Russian channel, talking about how, like, Holodomor is a myth and that it's not true and that it's exaggerated. It's literally like Holocaust denial, but on, on the first channel, you know? It is just so surreal. Like, imagine if right now Germany, on their main governmental channel, was running shows about how the Holocaust is a hoax and a myth. That is insane, right? Well, that is exactly what Russia is doing. Russia is talking about how the Holodomor was a hoax, and it, it didn't... It wasn't really that bad, and it actually was not deliberate. And this is a good example once again. Russians have done so many terrible things to the Ukrainians over the years, and then they asked, oh, wow, 
now? Why does Ukraine not want to be friends with us anymore? Why did they betray us to the West? Yeah, maybe because you say that the Holodomor is fake on the first governmental channel. Maybe that's why. Pissing me off, man. Is it actually nice living there? And like, would you consider the standard of living in Russia to be okay? And let's say if your salary is the minimum wage, would you be able to actually have something without struggling every month? Uh, definitely not. Here's the thing. The minimum wage in Russia is actually 12,130 rubles per month. And that is literally like nothing. Like your flat maintenance that you pay like every month uh, alone in Russia costs about like 5,000 rubles now. So that is basically half of it gone right there. And also a lot of people have to pay rent, etc. So no, the Russian standard of living and the Russian minimal wage is actually a complete joke. And the Russian government tries to pretend that it's actually a decent amount of money when it's totally not. So yeah, the answer is no, you cannot live off the minimum wage in Russia. I mean, I, I guess it's really the same in America as well. I guess, you know, minimum wage there is also not that much, but it's more than, uh, you know, 12,000 rubles per month for sure. What time of the year do Russians seem happiest or least sad? I would say definitely the summer. The reason is that basically during winter and especially spring as well, like early spring, when the snow starts melting and stuff like that, Russia just turns into a gray wasteland, just a complete mush, especially if you live in a provincial city where, you know, the city government barely fucking cleans the streets. Well, I'm talking about my city specifically. The entire cities are just covered in dirt, mush, there's like ice all over the place. It's, it's, you literally just look outside, everything is gray. There's like not a single shade of color anywhere. It's literally just browns and grays all around. It's the most depressing thing of all time. I don't know how people survive through that. I survive through it every year and I'm very miserable. But yeah, a lot of Russian cities only basically look decent in the summer because, you know, you have green grass, you have the sun, you have the blue sky. It's beautiful. But when it comes to a time of the year when you actually have to take care of the city and clean it, that is when provincial Russian cities don't really do a good job and it becomes the most depressing thing of all time. So yeah, summer is the nicest and uh, least depressing season in Russia, definitely. What American fast food chain would you like to import in Russia? Very good question. I would definitely say uh, definitely Taco Bell uh, because I've never had it. Uh, it's probably very good. And in and out I know it's impossible, but like Taco Bell though, you guys should come to Russia. Why, why the hell not? Oh yeah, definitely like Wendy's, Popeye's and Chick-fil-A. Once again, never tried any of these, but I heard they smack, so I want them. Okay, I want them now. I'm currently learning Russian and very badly and I'm wondering if it's a universal language Like if I was to go to Belarus or Ukraine would speaking Russian be acceptable? I know they're fairly similar, but an answer from an actual Russian dude would be a little reassuring Oh, yes, definitely Russian is uh, basically the lingua franca, which is uh, just you saying universal language But more posh. It's the lingua franca of basically all post-soviet countries nowadays So if you go to Ukraine, uh, yes, most people would actually try to speak Ukrainian to you, but but actually they could understand you if you speak Russian to them. Pretty much the majority of Ukrainians actually take Russian anyway, so they know it. Some Ukrainians just may choose not to speak Russian because, you know, as a political stance, I guess. When it comes to Belarus though, apparently there, Russian is actually more commonly used than Belarusian. So if you go to Belarus, you definitely will not have a problem. And the same goes for basically other countries like Kazakhstan, for example, or even countries like Georgia and Armenia to some extent. If you go to those countries, especially talk to some older people, and in Kazakhstan, I think basically everybody knows Russian though. Not only old people, but young people as well. But yeah, if you go there and you speak Russian, I think you will not have a single problem. So yeah, knowing Russian actually allows you to be able to communicate in many other countries. It's kind of like the English of uh, post-Soviet countries, if that makes sense, you know. So yeah, keep learning that Russian. Godspeed to you, my friends. And yeah, guys, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching it. I hope you guys did find something interesting in this video. Hopefully your question got answered, and if, you, if it didn't, then follow my Twitter and ask me the question next time that I announce my Russian Q&A on there. And yeah, guys, once again, reminding you that my YouTube figure drops on May 22nd. Go over down to the description, join the giveaway. Oh, it will be epic. And yeah, guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching it and i will see you guys in the next one peace